Hey there, Leo! Welcome back to my channel. If you enjoy my readings, please be sure to like and subscribe, as well as leave me a comment and let me know if this reading resonates with you. So this week we're going to use the Mystical Shaman Oracle, and we're also going to do a Love and Narcissistic Tarot reading. Alright. So for your first card, we've got the Vision Quest. Alright. And for your second card, we've got the Medicine Wheel. For your third card, we've got the Earth Keeper. It's alright to take a minute and pause it and really look at these pictures. That one's reversed. And, um, and it might bring forth some kind of message for you if you look at these right. Alright? Because um, these are based on archetypes. And this one's also reversed. The moon card reversed. Alright, and archetypes have to do with your inner... Um, basically like your subconscious. Alright, so let's take a look here and the first card is in the south and it represents that which you need to let go off. You need to shed. It's an old wound that no longer needs to define you. The vision quest, which is number 60 in the deck which is fairly close to the end of the deck, which means that you've been through a lot. Alright? And the vision quest says, in the vision quest, you face your fear, embrace your mortality, and meet face to face with spirit. When we feel stagnant, when we feel stagnant, I'm sorry, in, in a vision quest, it brings our lives into perspective. We realize our flaws and our potential and the opportunities that life is now offering us. We remain on the vision quest until we find the key to open a new door or write a new chapter in our lives. The invitation. The clarity by spending time alone in nature. It says, I'm sorry, it says find clarity by spending time in nature. If you live in the city, go for a walk in the park. If you live in the country, make sure that you spend time outside in contemplation. Get off the couch and get away from your desk. Go outside. The spirit helps those who help themselves. So set your, set your intention and ask nature for a guiding vision for your life. Alright, so the vision quest, such a beautiful picture. And the medicine wheel is the next one, which is in the place of the west, which represents a part of you that needs to die. It is an old, excuse me, it is an old story that needs to be let go, let go of, so that you may find new meaningful story in your life. All right, so the medicine wheel. The medicine wheel is kind of like the, um, the, um, <clears throat> in the traditional tarot deck, it's like the, um, wheel of fortune type of card. Alright, so the essence, the medicine wheel is a sacred hoop with the four cardinal directions well marked. It represents the cycle of life, the cycles of nature, and the circular pattern of our cosmos. It has been used for millennia in indigenous c cultures to bring harmony and well-being to the village. Its directions symbolize the four steps that the shaman takes to become a person of power and wisdom. To manifest clear blue skies in your life, it is important that you take a look at certain aspects of your being. Enter the medicine 
wheel from the south and reflect on how you still are clinging to events from the past. Continue to the west and notice which relationships are toxic and draining your energy. Step into the north and ask yourself, do I know my passion and show it? End at the east direction, visualizing how you want to live the next chapter of your life. It is up to you how much time that you spend in each direction, minutes, days, months, but when you are done, make sure to step outside of the wheel and contemplate your journey. All right, so um, when my mom passed away, I did a series of nautical stars. Um, and it, and I felt like I had lost my direction, you know, whenever the person that you go to for advice dies, you find yourself lost. You didn't know what direction to, to go in and you feel like you don't have anyone that you can talk to, um, as openly or as freely. And so I did, um, about 12 different nautical stars and this, this particular reading really reminds me of that. Um, but anywho, let's move forward. We've got the Earth Keeper. Alright, feel free to pause it and take a look at this and really resonate with it. See if it um, resonates with you. And this is 18, the card number 18. In case that has any... Uh, something that resonates with you. So the essence of this card is just as you're involved in co-creating your world, I'm sorry, um, we're going to read this anyway, but um, this is actually reversed, so it's going to be a little bit more information here. The earth keepers are dedicated to the stewardship of the earth and all life. They choose to hold sacred the dream of the planet, where all beings live in peace, and where the rivers and the air are clean. Remember that everything that you do has an impact for seven generations. The medicine. As you care for your body, you show your care for Mother Earth. So begin with the stewardship of your health. What are you putting into your mouth? Are you feeding on foods and thoughts that are not good for you? Start doing what you know will be good for you today. Alright, so that's pretty strong advice and I'd say pretty good advice. Um, let's see what the moon card says. So this one's reversed and Um, we're going to read the essence and the medicine. So every 28 days, the moon manifests a steady progression from darkness to light and then back again. The phenomenon is, in our skies has a powerful impact on our human psyche, psych, psyches. It offers us a certainty that after a period of emptiness and darkness that there is light waiting so that we can be reborn into a new phase. This calls to mind a native African prayer to the moon. May our lives be renewed as yours is. The moon also has a strong influence on the ebb and flow of the waters of the earth. This same power in turn affects human feelings and emotions and mirrors their rising from the hiding back into the unconscious. All right, so what that's saying is that your subconscious mind might be more um, at the forefront during a full moon. Just like the oceans come farther in. All right, so let's read the medicine. This card calls to calls you to go on a journey of renewal, just like the moon does every month so you can get unstuck, whether from a specific situation in life in general, or for this you need to make time to be with yourself without the distractions of modern society and have the courage to look at the unwanted, unembarked parts of your being until you arrive at the place 
a resolution. The, shaman, the shamanic lore explains that the finest treasures of humanity are hidden where people are most afraid to go. All right, and this is so true because even in kindergarten, they train you to use your right hand if you're left-handed, and your subconscious mind is attached to your left hand and your right brain. So if you're right-handed, then you're a left brain person. And if you always use your right hand and you never use your left hand, then you really are putting stagnation on your creative side of your brain. And this is the, the side that will come out whenever you, um, you know, anything that you've buried, you know, pain, sorrow, grief, um, this is all going to come to the surface during a full moon. So if you are, you know, struggling, you know, you might try just um, using your left hand more often or in times whenever you're feeling stressed out, you know, you might try to paint something or draw something with your left hand instead of your right hand. Even if you're left, you know, um, even if you're left-handed, still I would recommend this. All right, uh, let's go ahead and pull a lover's card. So I've got this new lover's deck. Uh-oh, one jumped out. Oh, the sickly lover. When you're sick or your lover is sick, it gives you the opportunity to see their true colors. So if you're sick or if your lover is sick, then this gives you the opportunity to be the caregiver, to take care of your loved one and to watch over them and help them recover. As well as if you're sick, you can also see how much your lover really cares for you whenever rough times come. All right, and this other one just jumped out at me here. Now I put that one on top of the vision quest and this one goes on top of the medicine wheel. So this one's called real love, romance, fantasy, and health, wealth, and how you fare, as well as your happiness. And what relates to it is your communication, truth, and peace. Alright? So, all these things are needed in order to become the real love, in order to have this real love. Health, wealth, happiness. Fantasy. Alright, and then the Earth Keeper, we've got a Devo. Okay, so a diva is a female, um, but a divo is the male version of a diva. So this person is typically a singer, and they love to practice. Always, always practicing. Like um, it kind of reminds me of like drama. Whenever you're in drama club, or you know, you have to practice your words and your songs and whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. And it says that you become like a beautiful vase, all right? Because you're the understudy. So maybe there's something that you're studying for, something that you're repetitively doing, or, uh, and this is, has to do with a man, not a woman, all right? Because this is Devo, and a, and a diva is a female. So this is particularly for the Devo, someone in your life who is um, a male diva. Alright, the moon card that goes with the moon is referring to your subconscious or your shadow self. And it says overcome triggers by reprogramming your negative beliefs. Substitute negative beliefs with true positive beliefs. All right, so if you're in a um, bad relationship or a toxic relationship, whether it be with your love life or your work or whatever situation, um, then you have to reprogram yourself with positive thinking. And you can do this by um, 
simply just thinking positive thoughts before you go to sleep at night and when you wake up in the morning. So at this time, your brain is in theta delta waves, which means it's very easy for you to change your thought patterns and change your beliefs based on what you think about before you go to sleep. So whenever you're going to sleep at night and you're saying your prayers or whatever you do, make sure that you're thinking positive thoughts and make sure that you're focusing on positive things for yourself or it can cause a lot of issues and it can even, um, you know, have you waking up in a bad mood. If you go to sleep thinking about all the horrible things that happened during the day, you're going to wake up in a bad mood. All right. And this is also good if you're trying to quit bad um, habits. Like if you're trying to quit smoking, then you might put on like um, some type of subliminal messaging to quit smoking right before you go to sleep. And that will literally brainwash you into quitting. And that is and it's funny because this is talking about the moon card and the subconscious is where those things are stored. So it's definitely resonating with the reading so far. So I'm going to pull one narcissist card for my Leos. So whoever it is that may be... Now this, this doesn't necessarily have to be someone else, okay? This could be you. So don't ever think that um, that you're not a narcissist because the reason why we do these readings is so that we learn things about the people in our lives as well as ourselves. Alright, so the narcissist card is a vulnerable narcissist. Someone who's distorted, who has distorted thoughts, distorted behavior, cluster B, borderline personality behavior, blame shifting, bringing up sensitive topics, or starting fights for no reason. If the father stops talking to their children, or the mother acts cold and distant, tem temporarily acts confident, or recruits narcissistic agendas. Avoidant personality disorder. Alright. Cannot take criticism. The vulnerable narcissists, they become the victim. I can dish it out, but I can't take it. <laughs> Misery loves company. Stealing credit. Alright, so this has to do with people who, um, they're the, the kind of people who aren't happy for you whenever you have graduated college or, you know, if they feel like you're beating them to the punch, they're not going to be happy for you. This is the kind of people in your life that you don't need. Uh, you definitely don't need anybody in your life who's going to be jealous or hater, like a hater mentality. Alright? So these are the kind of people who, um, you know, drag you down. And you need people in your life that will build you up and help you to survive. Because it's a hard life we live, right? Alright, so I hope this reading resonates with you, Leo, and you come back and see me next week. Be sure to like, subscribe, as well as um, leave me a comment. If you'd like a personal reading, also just leave me a comment or um, direct message, and we will get you that reading.